Sir, with all due respect, just because you're thinking about relocating back to Detroit, we won't know where to find you if you're not actually relocated back to Detroit. So, um, all right. right and if you were to tell me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do get okay. this thing out there. Detroit. But I got to when I got to Flint, I talked in um I live in Flint. I mean Detroit, man. I'm Detroit. Detroit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I live in Detroit. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm confident with that, but okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Sir, if I were you, I would stop speaking and listen to the judge. The content presented in this video is intended for commentary, analysis and educational purposes, and is protected under the principles of fair use as defined by U.S. copyright law. Welcome to another enlightening episode of Kangaroo Court Law. Today, we find ourselves in the digital chambers of the esteemed Judge Elizabeth DeSanto, where the pursuit of justice takes center stage. As we encounter a defendant whose sense of place is as uncertain as a compass spinning in a tornado, at first, he claims to call Detroit, Michigan his home, but as the questions unfold, his answers begin to waver like a leaf in the wind. This man is very confused, because at first he claims that he lives in Detroit, Michigan, and then he starts stuttering saying that he lives in Flint, Michigan, but he's thinking about moving to Detroit. With a firm but fair tone, she reminds the defendant that the court can't rely on what someone thinks about their residence. In matters of the law, precision is paramount, and knowing one's address is no exception. All right, we are going on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Randy Spencer, 232107. And Sergeant, your name for the record, please. Sergeant Robert Spencer. All right, thank you. And please raise your right hand. You saw me swear from the testimony about to give this man to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. All right, thank you. And you may proceed on the warrant. Your Honor, on September 20th, 2023, at approximately 1.55 a.m., Officer Cox on patrol in the city of Wyandotte when he observed a blue Hyundai Elantra with a defective headlight traveling northbound on 4th Street near Vinewood. Officer Cox initiated traffic stop and made contact with the driver of the vehicle, Randy Spencer. Officer Cox observed a, a crack pipe and ashtray at the center council in plain view and asked Spencer to step out of the vehicle. Spencer was placed under arrest for possession of drug paraphernalia. While searching Spencer, Officer Cox located two white crisp-like substances in Spencer's left front pocket, which he recognized as crack cocaine. While searching the vehicle, Officer Cox located several loose crack rocks in the center council near the crack pipe. Additionally, Officer Harris located two tight cellophane, cellophane baggies containing crack cocaine near the passenger seat. Crack cocaine was seized as evidence and field tested positive as cocaine. The substance weighed approximately 2.85 grams. Nothing further. All right, thank you. Upon examination, the complaining witness that found that the offense charge was committed, that there's probable cause the defendant committed the offense. And uh, Sergeant, there's also a fourth, a bitch just under fourth offense notice, correct? That's correct, ma'am. All right. And good morning, counsel. Your appearance, please, for the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Chester, here on behalf of my client, Simon Stetson, that I may heard via Zoom. That's the arraignment. Wait for more reading. My client is here All right. Thank you. And, sir, your name, please, for the record. Randy Spencer. All right. Thank you. And the court will waive the formal reading, enter a plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment and uh, sir, you do have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? No, I don't understand. Mr. Spencer, Mr. Spencer, you do have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. And in fact, you've had an opportunity to speak to an attorney today, correct? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> you also have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. And you also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> All right. The court's going to, I'm already interested if not guilty, I'm going to also indicate the Probable cause conference date will be September 28th at 9.15 a.m. 
And council asked to bond. Your Honor, my client's 64 years old. He lives with his sister and maturity. He has a strong family support system. He was working at GM. He was on the assembly line. However, uh, he did get into an accident where he broke his leg and had severe injury. However, he is looking for jobs currently. He indicates he will appear to need all future court dates. Um, on a medical issue, he does have diabetes and requires uh, bills. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, and Oh, thank you. And sir, you live in Flint? I'm yeah, young. I didn't hear you. Where, where do you, what city do you live in? Flint or Detroit? Well, I'm staying in Flint, but I came down to visit my sister for a little while. Well, okay. So, um, I'm not really sure what that means because you have two addresses listed. So, do you live in Detroit or do you live in Flint? Well, I do. I do live in um, Flint. But I came down to visit my sister for a little while to see if I want to uh, come down this way. That's why I'm about okay. to Flint for five years. So, if you live in Flint, why are you providing us with the Detroit address? I didn't provide that. Oh, I see what oh, you're saying. You. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Yaron. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking about moving back to um, Detroit. That's why. That's all. Okay. Well, sir, with all due respect, just because you're thinking about relocating back to Detroit, we won't know where to find you if you're not actually relocating back to Detroit. So, um, all right. right and if you were to tell me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do get okay. this thing. Detroit. What? But I got to the, when I got the plant, I talked to um I live in Flint. I'm in Detroit, man. I'm Detroit. Detroit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I live in Detroit. Okay. I'm, I'm not sorry. Very confident with that, but okay. Just, All right. And sir, if I were you, I would stop speaking and listen to the judge. Okay. And <clears throat> Sergeant Fitzpatrick as to bond. Your Honor, there's obviously an extensive criminal history with the habitual force uh, attachment to the warrant. Uh, Aline has a Flint address. Obviously, there's some dispute of whether it's Flint or Detroit. I would recommend a uh, fifteen thousand dollar ten percent bond. Your Honor, to the request, I respect the request and consideration a ten thousand dollar ten percent bond. Uh, he did extend to me what he believes his financial limitations were. I don't believe it'll exceed a thousand. We're between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Obviously, it's considered a lot of money. I just asked for that consideration. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. Sir, um, what happened on your matter out of Genesee County for robbery? You were bound over to circuit court for assault intent to rob while unarmed, unarmed robbery, assault intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder. What happened on those matters? Um, at this time, this is still a process. It's in process right now. I have an attorney in play at this time. Hold on. What does in the process mean? Do you did you not show up for a court date and there's a warrant? Or is it that, I mean I'm sorry, Your Honor. The next court date is in December. Next court date is December. Yes, ma'am. And what is that court date for? I'm in charge of that against me. That I guess. I so I understand, I understand that. Let me rephrase it. Is it for a final pre-trial, a settlement conference? Is it for a jury trial? What is it? I'm a pre-trial. What's that? Sure. I'm a pre-trial, Your Honor. I'm a pre-trial. From 2021, it was bound over, and two years later, it's still at the final pre-trial stage? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And have you ever failed to appear in court for any reason, sir? No, ma'am. I already appeared, no more. Okay, so this matter in Genesee County that is up for a, pre, a final pretrial in December, you're out on bond in that matter, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so then you're now arrested pretty far away from Flint for another felony. So based upon that, based upon your criminal history, the habitual offender fourth offense status, where 
you're looking at enhanced sentence, your lack of actual address as to where you're really living, the court is going, does find that the $15,000 10% bond is appropriate. In the event you post bonds, you're not to possess consuming alcohol or drugs that are not prescribed, which I would presume is the condition of your bond currently. And then we'll see you back on <clears throat> September 28th at 9.15 a.m. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. Have a good day. All right, let's go off the record. Good morning, Council. Good morning. And which matter are you here on? Amber Strum. Okay. You've already spoken to the prosecutor. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.